Hi, there's been a lot of videos done about modifications for a small arbor press. This is a one ton version that I own. I've done the modification or some of the modifications that uh, I've ran across on YouTube and one of the more important ones that I ran across was a video done by Alexander Dyer where he adapts uh, some uh, snap rivet tooling to an arbor press. So this video, uh, I'd, I'd just like to review what those mods are and uh, then I'm going to move on into what exactly uh, I made for tooling to insert into the ports that are machined into the, into the device afterwards. So let's get to uh, how I modified uh, the arbor press first. Uh, the first mod is to uh, drill a hole in the bottom of the ram and put a set screw in in order to uh, hold the tooling in place. Uh, this hole I drilled at 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, that's because it matches up well with uh, other tooling that I have made for a Tandy leather press uh, that my wife uses. Uh, the set screw, uh, you could have a wing nut style set screw on there, but I find it's uh, better to have uh, a fastener that's recessed. This uh, foot is the tool that uh, lives in the bottom of the, of the press, because um, typically you're just using the press for uh, more heavy operations. The other mod that uh, did to uh, go along with uh, drilling the hole in the bottom of the shaft was to drill a corresponding and matching hole in the uh, plate at the bottom of the arbor press. This is how the uh, press uh, works concerning the removal of the two teeth in that uh, if you're not satisfied with the positioning of the handle uh, when it presents itself to you with the part underneath it you can just turn it backwards get a different position note the machined hole in the bottom it's three eighths of an inch as well in order to match the one that uh, was machined into the ram. Uh, I inserted a, a point into the hole and then I brought that down to meet the, uh, the plate and drilled that uh, on the milling machine. So those are the features of this press and what will allow it to uh, accommodate tooling. I have the press mounted to my bench, it's a uh, three quarter inch material and it's mounted there with wing nuts. So if I need to take that off of there, uh, it's a relatively quick job. Okay, let's, let's move on. The first thing that I made for the press was a, uh, a handle that is uh, about another 50% longer than the original. I don't use it very often, but uh, once in a while it just makes uh, punching holes a little bit easier. This uh, leather punch is comprised of a, uh, I guess, uh, an insert. An insert typically found in a uh, handheld punch like this. These particular ones are from Tandy Leather Corporation. So it's a simple machining job. It's a 3 8 inch on the insert part and uh, the threading to match the, uh, the punch tubes uh, I believe is uh, M6 1.5 or 1.25 It's been a while And the bottom piece uh, is simply a piece of uh, brass. It's machined at 3 eighths here. I believe it was 5 eighths in diameter to begin with. 
Let's, let's see how that works. So this is a piece of uh, tooling leather. Only about, I guess, uh, two millimeters thick. And very clean hole. Can also do thinner leather like this uh, chrome tan. And you'll see that hole's uh, very clean and nice and complete. I also uh, modified this uh, tool from Tandy. It was a uh, handheld punch. It's designed to mate up with these uh, stamps, leather stamps. So one could easily uh, insert that into there. And for this one, I'm going to put the, the longer arm in there. It helps if you wet the leather first. Uh, for this demo, I'm not going to do that. All right, here we go. And there's the impression. And of course, I made this punch set that has a. Uh, 3 8 diameter on the end to fit the ram. Uh, half inch material making its way down to 3 16 This is a very interesting set. It's called uh, Wad Cutter. So there's a cone shape for the top and then a, a specific size hole on the bottom piece. And that's machined all the way through the through hole. So as uh, wads are punched through your material, they just drop out the bottom. So I line it up first. Now, this material here is a quarter inch felt from a, a set of insoles for boots. So I use this uh, for wipers on my lathe, lathe bed. Uh, I'll cut them to size and then can punch the hole for the screw to hold it in place with this. And it's really the only means that I've found that uh, can do this reliably and I'm uh, impressed with the result. Now, I don't know if you've ever tried anything like this before, but uh, that is an excellent result for this type of loose material and this thickness. You can note that it also works on thinner material. And if you've ever tried to make uh, uh, plastic or nylon washers, this is a very good tool to help with that. I have uh, machined two other smaller sizes that I keep together in bags so I remember uh, which ones go with which. I've also made a couple of presser plates. Uh, not as useful now that I have my 20 ton shop press. But if you'd like to take, uh, say, uh, leather material or uh, even uh, sheet metal and flatten it out in a precise manner, then these pressure plates can uh, help in that uh, endeavor. And finally, the last concept is uh, that of a 
cupped washer. So I have uh, machined a piece of hardwood uh, with a uh, step, a shoulder, inside shoulder, and a, and a through hole. And you can put your washer in there, cap it with a ball bearing. and you pretty well have an instant uh, cupped washer. I hope you found this video helpful. My intention is just to help you explore some tooling for the Arbor Press. I'm sure there's uh, plenty of other uh, ideas out there and I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. If you haven't seen my video on 12 ton and 20 ton shop press tooling uh, see the links in the description. I will also make a link to Alexander Dyer's video uh, in that location as well. Thank you for watching and uh, stay safe.